Hey, I'm Jordan, this is my workshop, these are my mandos, and this is my big O. And if you would like to learn how you can win this diorama from me for free that I am touching right now with my finger, or make one yourself, stick around to the end of the video. Let's check them out. Here he is everybody, the Death Watch Mandalorian. Fresh from Hong Kong, thank you so much Toys Wonderland. I am a giant Mando fan and have been since I was a child, just like many of you probably. Been super excited to get this guy. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he looks like next to Bo-Katan and all the other Mandos that I have when they come out. But um, let's take a look. Okay, got all the wrapping off and uh, I have to say, he looks absolutely fabulous. So his uh, armor plate looks like it's a little off center, but as you saw in the instructions, uh, if you slowed my video down, it is all Velcro. So you can just recenter it. So no sweat, doesn't matter if it's off center, you can just fiddle it right back into place. And think about this, I just realized this, you can make custom mandos without having to repaint them. A lot of these Mando Arbors, including Boba Fett's, are all Velcroed on. So you could actually make yourself a custom Mando if you want. You got yourself a couple of Death Watches, a couple of other Mandos, switch some plates out, take some custom photos, do a custom display. Go nuts, why not? And um, basically everything on him is incredibly straightforward and pretty simple. But something that I noticed as soon as I saw this design in the show, in The Mandalorian, when we saw this guy picking little baby Din Djarin up um, when he was dealing with the super battle droids is that not only does he have the Death Watch insignia from Clone Wars, um, but he also looks like he is the guy that gives Din his first set of armor. Let me show you what I mean. Here is my Din Djarin and look at those metal plates. It's the exact same metal plate. It's even the same molding and casting. You can see the weather marks here on Din and the indentions here on Heavy Mando are the same. He's the uh, armor daddy for little baby Din here. And we look at his hand plates and his forearm gauntlet. They're the exact same molds. I noticed this in the show. Now, Din's got more damage on his left shoulder pad and he has his custom right shoulder pad. But the chest plate, the forearm pieces, and the leg pieces, if I can move his ambin phase pulse rival out of the way, the leg pieces are the same. And look, Din's is on upside down. I don't know if I did that on accident or if that's the way he came. I can't remember right now. <laughs> but it's the same armor pieces uh, on the uh, upper legs, the forearms, and the chest piece. And, of course, Death Watch Mando's helmet is just a dentless Boba Fett helmet. So we've got some clever reuse of stuff here for the designers for the Death Watch armor for the show. The only thing that he seems to have that is completely original here um, are the non-damaged shoulder pads and these cool uh, trapezius uh, uh, over the shoulder armor pieces here. Um, and he's got these mirror image knee pads, which do seem to be, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, an original design, I don't remember these fin flaps on these outside pieces here, uh, or greeblies, or whatever you want to call them, having this exact shape. Um, but these seem uh, like they're an adjustment to Boba Fett's design or another Mando design. These don't have damage, um, and the helmet is dentless, of course, because it's not Boba Fett. By the way, I'm looking forward to seeing Cad Bane in Mando Season 3, and if you don't know how Boba got this dent, Cad Bane's the one who gave it to him. So, fun fact there. Coxix armor, the uh, lower spine armor here, if you will. And uh, of course he doesn't have that lovely boot cut uh, boot design like so many of us and other reviewers love, um, but it is a pretty soft material. So two things there, obviously you'll be able to pose this uh, with this really, really soft boot material, but 
it popped right off there. Um, so <laughs> with the boot material being so soft, you'll be able to pose them. But of course, we're all going to worry about that cracking over time. So I probably won't be displaying mine in dynamic poses unless it's just to take a picture with one of the dioramas that I create. By the way, that's my main thing. I am a diorama and display creator, custom pieces. So stick around, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up if you're into stuff like that. And if you're into cool uh, reviews for cool custom or high-end action figures. It's a nice stiff ankle joint though, I have to say. That was actually hard to get straight again so I could put his leg back in. And this is very tight. His pants are going all the way down in the boot there. So there we go. All right, we got that back on. Uh, I remember seeing this online and thinking, I'm glad we're getting a different color. So let me get the plastic off of this. So this is, of course, that same foot molded base, which kind of makes it very uh, unitasker. You can't really, it's not very good multi-purpose base metal nameplate, but it is that darker tone of sand, which means we know that Din uh, was raised not on Navarro or Tatooine, but on some other planet that I think is still yet unnamed, if I'm not mistaken. Um, correct me in the comments below if, I, if it has been named, but this is more of a gray sand base. Let me get the other one so you can see what the other base looks like. Okay, so I grabbed the base that comes with the uh, Mandalorian and the Child Deluxe set. And of course, you can see it's the same mold as we expected. Um, this one comes with the dynamic flight stand um, piece uh, already attached into the base, which I didn't pick up on that when I first pulled it out of the box, but it does slide out. So they leave it in there for you uh, when you get the figure so that you can uh, put him in his lovely flying away with baby din pose. But you see there's a gigantic difference in that paint color, even though it's the same mold. So two different planets. I kind of like this one more. I like this gray. This one's a little bit uh, greeny, tanny, pukey brown. I like this one a little bit more. So anyways, good, nice difference. All right, so he all comes with this uh, alternate leg piece. I don't know if that is so that you can, if you want to, you can create uh, a set of two different uh, Death Watch Mandalorians. So that is, I guess, maybe the thinking behind this. He comes with one alternate leg plate. So if you bought two of these, you could switch out the leg plate and of course have different hands and you could have yourself two Mandalorian uh, Death Watch squad members and actually have them have different armor. So I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. Thank you, Hot Toys. I'm gonna leave the OG one on there for now. But let's take a look at this beautiful jetpack. I, I love jetpacks, you know, uh, as I've said in previous unboxings for the Mandalorian, specifically Boba Fett, Joe Johnston is one of my favorite creators. He's responsible for Boba Fett's design. We wouldn't have any of the Mandalorian show or the Mandalorian universe or the Mandalorian lore if we did not have Joe Johnston. He designed Boba Fett's original armor. He also designed the at, -AT by the way, and he's been a lead designer at ILM for years. And he also directed the Rocketeer. Cool guy, cool helmet, cool jetpack. Boba Fett, Mandalorians, Rocketeer, it all connects. It's all this synergy of awesome centered around Star Wars, Mandalorians, Boba Fett, and Joe Johnston. So I'm a big fan of jetpacks for all those same reasons. He also directed Captain America, the first Avenger, if you're not aware. Um, so this thing looks pretty good. The, uh, the weathering in here looks, I guess it looks good. Yeah, for, for a sec there, it looked sloppy, but I think that's just what they're trying to do is make it look like it's a little splattered, but it looks good. And this is supposedly, Mac oh wow, that's really strong. Nice, very strong magnet on the back. Look at that. That is, that is not coming off. Oops, okay, <laughs> if I don't get it close enough. That is awesome. Okay, wasn't expecting that. Good job, Hot Toys. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So there's his sick backpack. And of course he comes with these awesome flame, awesome flame effects, um, which, you know, he, Iron Man's got them and you've got them for the jetpacks now. And uh, let me get them lined up properly. There we go. And these do turn just a little bit. They don't go this way, left to right, but they do go front to back. So they're not, uh, so they are properly ailerons like you'd have on a plane, right? So you could position them so he's, uh, you know, doing a flip or coming a little bit down or whatever you want to do or have him doing a spin out of control. He comes with these cool blasters. Uh, this is the long rifle blaster with the grip in the front, kind of like, a, I think you might call this a carbine, but this is painted and weathered very nicely. 
I like the detail, it's something different, which is always cool to have. It's nice to have the variation. And this is very cool. This is looking super sci-fi. I mean, it's kind of leaning away from Star Wars a little for me, not in a bad way, like it looks good. It fits this character, but it's just kind of looking something like you'd see more out of a, a standard sci-fi film rather than a Star Wars sci-fi film, but I like the shape of it. It's almost leaning into the Nerf gun realm for me without looking, you know, childish and toy-like. So that's looking really cool, I like this. We got these cool hands and I was just noticing the shading. I don't know if you can see it in my lighting here. Yeah, so if you can see, it's got a sort of a nice fade effect that's happening because of the way they weathered it. You've got this main uh, mid-tone blue, and then you've got the highlights of blue, and it looks like either some type of, depending on, I don't know how they ap apply it in the factory, but it looks like almost like if I did it, it would be done as a wash and then wiped away and then lightly sanded. And then you get this, the highlights coming through and the edges coming through to make it look like it's been, you know, hit against things over time and worn down. And it almost looks like a gradiated fade effect. This blue reminds me of the walls I painted in a sci-fi hallway diorama I did. I love this shade of blue and this gradiated effect. So you get uh, on the right hand here, you get your fist, you get your gun grip hand, you get your uh, open palms here. That's what's on him out of the box. You get the same thing for the left hand. So two fists, two open palms and two uh, grippy grippy palms. We're gonna see some more of them down the road. So we're likely gonna get some more Mandos and that's what I'm saving my money for. I would love to have a big wall of just Mandalorians since they inspired so much of my childhood and so much fun from my childhood. Let me get him into some cool poses and I'll let you know how you can win that diorama or make one yourself. So hit the subscribe and like and uh, let's see what we can make them look like. One thing I wanted to say really quick in posing him is I did not realize this with my other Mandalorian figures because I don't usually use these um, stands, but where his gripper has to fit on his waist prevents the these from being in any position other than what it is right now. I can't move them forward and backwards and they're actually kind of preventing the jetpack from sitting all the way where it's supposed to. So this is gonna present a problem if you want to use the jetpack uh, or have the thrusters on here. There's only really one or two tiny ways you can really adjust it. So just be aware of that, but that's kind of incidental to the way the design of the character versus the design of how they have to kind of grip him safely. So kind of a trade off there. Nothing, I don't think they could have done any differently really. Another thing I did notice when you pose him, um, his neck joint is very open and the back of his head is, so you can get him looking really far forward and really far up, so you can get a nice flight pose out of him, as you saw. Something I am noticing and just trying to get him in this pose to try to replicate the image on the box, um, his uh, boots are fighting me at the ankle joints because they are, uh, they are soft, I will admit, but they are fighting me. I'm having to over tension or under tension the angle of the actual ankle joint to compensate for the pushback on the boot. Now, it's not a big deal, like really, but if we wanna be finicky and nitpicky, that is something that you'll probably find if you're trying to get him in a slightly more of a dynamic pose where you're having to bend his knees, have him stepping forward, stepping back, something like that. The ankles, and especially if you're standing, the ankles may fight you a little bit because of the uh, leather around the boot. You see how squished in all of this is? Uh, that's because I had to fight this to really get him to stay in this pose. He fell over like four or five times just trying to get him into this pose. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you would like to win this diorama, I'll need you to go check out my Heavy Infantry Mandalorian review video and leave a comment there, okay? That's all you gotta do. I promise those people who watch that video that at 2,000 subscribers, I will be doing a giveaway and somebody who commented specifically on that video will win this diorama. Otherwise, if you'd like to learn how, to, how I made this or how to make one yourself, 
go check out my how to make an action figure display video. This is sort of beginner to intermediate level of ideas. If you've never done this before, I go over every single step in detail and make one yourself for less than about $20, $25 max, even if you have to buy all of the pieces. So that's what I do by trade. I am a miniature diorama builder and artist, and I love making custom displays for people and for myself. So that's what I specialize in, but incidentally, I'm also a figure collector. Thank you for stopping by. Please give me a subscribe. And if you'd like to win this, go check out my armorer review video and leave a comment. You're awesome. Have a great day.